Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to St. Pius the 10th Catholic Church for the Eucharistic celebration, the fourth Sunday of Advent. Please turn off all electronic media at this time if you've not already done so, and please stand and greet your neighbors. Good evening. Good evening. I see some uh, new faces here. Uh, we have a choir that composed of our church and uh, Court Street Presbyterian Church, right? Yeah, Court Street, yeah. So, welcome to this uh, wonderful celebration of the Holy Eucharist. Welcome and please come back. <laughs> In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Dear brothers and sisters, let us bring to our mind our sins and ask God mercy and forgiveness so that we may become worthy to offer this sacrifice. Lord Jesus, you are a mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, God of mercy on us, forgive us our sins and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray.
Pour forth, we beseech you, O Lord, your grace into our hearts, that we, to whom the incarnation of Christ, your Son, was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, for ever and ever. Reading from the book of the prophet Micah. Thus says the Lord, you, Bethlehem Ephrathah, too small to be among the clans of Judah. From you shall come forth from me one who is to be the ruler in Israel, whose origin is from old, from ancient times. Therefore the Lord will give them up until the time when she, will, she who is to give birth has born. And the rest of his kindred shall return to the children of Israel. He shall stand firm and shepherd his flock by the strength of the Lord, in the majestic name of the Lord his God. And they shall remain, for now his greatness shall reach to the ends of the earth. He shall be peace. The word of the Lord. Once again, O Lord of hosts, look down from heaven and see. Take care of this vine and protect what your right hand has planted. The Son of Man, whom you yourself made strong. Lord, let us see. from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters in Christ, when Christ came into the world, he said, sacrifice and offer, offering you did not desire, 
but a body you prepared for me. In holocaust and sin offerings you took no delight. Then I said, as is written of me in the scroll, behold, I come to you, do your will, O God. First he says, sacrifices and offerings, holocaust and sin offerings, you neither desired nor delighted in. These are offered according to the law. Then he said, Behold, I come to do your will. He takes away the first to establish the second. But this will we have been consecrated through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Mary set out and traveled to the hill country in haste, to a town of Judea, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the infant leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth, filled with the Holy Spirit, cried out in a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And how does this happen to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For at the moment the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the infant in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed are you who believed that what was spoken to you by the Lord would be fulfilled. The Gospel of the Lord. Last week, if you remember, Father 
we're going to talk about metanoia. Metanoia, turning. Turning away from sin and turning toward God. Away from sin and turning toward God. And again, God is with us during those times when we turn away from sin. And when we turn to God, God is with us. So today in our readings, we have some more of God being with us. God being among us. Emmanuel, that's what Isaiah promised that Jesus would be called. Emmanuel, God with us. So today's gospel, we have two women. Two women. Two women who were so important in the role of salvation that they played. The first woman, Elizabeth, was old. Beyond child years. So we had one woman, woman that was old. We had one woman that was very young. Very unexpected with her pregnancy. But very young. Very old. Very young. We had one Elizabeth who had waited for a child for a very long time. Had prayed a long time for a child. And realized now that the child was a gift from God. We had the pregnancy of Mary that was unexpected. Certainly not what she had thought. I'm sure that Mary was a lot like a lot of young ladies and young who always dream about being a mom. But maybe in that situation with Mary, it came a little quicker than she had thought. We have one woman who is carrying the last prophet of the Old Testament. And one that is carrying the first prophet, the Messiah, of the New Testament. Again, the Old Testament, the New Testament. We have two ladies that, through their faith and courage, played their role that God chose for them in the role of salvation. They said yes. And they opened their hearts, their minds, their being, their very being, to the gifts that God gave them. Whether it was a gift that was long awaited, or whether it was a gift that was unexpected. Both times, gifts of God. Even though their roles were different, they still said yes to God. They still were open with courage and with faith. Think about Elizabeth for a minute. Think about maybe her anxiety of finding out that she was pregnant at a quite an old age. More of a grandmother age to Mary than a cousin, you know, because the scriptures say that they were cousins. But Elizabeth, you can think of the things that were going through her mind of the anxiety that she might have. Sure, she was joy-filled, right? But one of the things that would be, who is this child that God has blessed her? Mary, on the other hand, think about the things that she had went through, the anxiety that she had, the courage and the faith that she had to have to embrace this new role that God had given her in this role of salvation, in bringing in the Savior of the world, giving birth, carrying and giving birth to Jesus. Gospel tells us that Joseph could have divorced her, and if it wasn't for the angel that appeared to him in a dream, he would have. So we know that at that point, that it was very difficult for Mary to be able to uh, Shoulder of all of these things that were going to have to happen to her. But yet, but yet, with all of this going on, with all of this unexpected things that happened to Mary, she didn't think too much of herself. Gospel tells us today that she went in haste to see Elizabeth, in haste to see her cousin, in haste to be of service, in haste to see how she could help. That's what tells us she stayed with her about three months. Which we think was about the time that John the Baptist was born. Because if you remember right, the angel Gabriel told Mary that Elizabeth was now six months along. And she stayed with her three months, six and three is nine. I think that's pretty much what it takes. So she stayed with her three months. So Mary thinking of other people. 
And then when the two come together, they embrace. And Elizabeth says those beautiful words, right? You know, from the time that your sound of your voice heard my, entered my ears, the child in my womb left for joy. John the Baptist, even sensing the presence of Christ, was able to leave for joy. So not only did we have an encounter in that moment of the two cousins, we also had the encounter of the two cousins of Jesus and John the Baptist. Even though they were still in the room, John the Baptist sensed the presence of Christ. So what does all this mean? The catechumens and candidates, please come forward. Friends, the Advent season is filled with the stories of the unexpected. A young Jewish woman named Mary conceives a son while remaining a virgin. Her cousin Elizabeth, who is thought to be barren, conceives a son, John the Baptist. Our prayer is that you continue to be open 
to the unexpected ways that God will work in your own lives. As you go forward from this holy place to ponder the scriptures, be assured of our prayer that God will continue to be revealed in your lives. We eagerly await the day when you will remain here and join in the celebration of the Eucharist. Now, go in peace. Go in peace and may God's word light your way. Go in peace and know that for you you will be brave. Go in peace to follow Christ day by day. Let's proclaim our own faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was it of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. To look forward to the resurrection of the dead. We thank Almighty God for all our blessings and we ask Him to give, give us the grace so that we may continue to welcome Him into our lives. For God's church on earth, may the Holy Spirit grant us strength and joy as we share the gospel message. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our for our elected leaders, may God grant them understanding and courage for sowing unity rather than division. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For our children and youth, that the example of parents and other adults of the parish may foster a sense of openness to the Holy Spirit in their lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For all expectant parents and their unborn children, may God grant health and wellness to mother and child. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For this community of faith, may God help us to support and uplift one another in prayer. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all newly baptized, especially Charles Lee Matthews, who will be baptized here this weekend. May he always walk in the light of Christ, guided by the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved death, especially Mary Pagans. May God grant her and all everlasting joy and peace in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions of this man, which are for the repose of the soul of Judy Cruz, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let's offer our own prayers. We fly to thy protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petitions in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin.
Bless our Lord God for creation, for the goodness we have received, the bread we offer you, for the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Bless our Lord God for creation, for the goodness we have received, the wine we offer you, for the wine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Pray for the senses, trace of my sacrifice and duets may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Holy Spirit, O Lord, sanctify these gifts laid upon your altar, just as he filled with his power the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for all the oracles of the prophets foretold him. The Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist, sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy alone, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dove fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread toward the world and bring her 
to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, Sean our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. How mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and for by divine nation we are there to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that with the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, Lord Jesus Christ, who said the apostles, peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously, Grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed.
let us pray. Having received this pledge of eternal redemption, we pray, Almighty God, that as the feast day of our salvation draws ever nearer, so we may press forward all the more eagerly to the worthy celebration of the mystery of your son's nativity, who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen. And now you'll clap a hand for them. <laughs> Thank you, Denise, for all your hard work. And please bring them back every weekend. I also would like to thank uh, Rhonda Finnegan for organizing a wonderful, uh, uh, what do you call that? Food basket. Food basket, yes. Food basket, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, food basket to all the shut and homebound. It was a great uh, celebration of our joy and our solidarity with all the others this morning. So thank you for leading that. The mass schedules for Christmas are 24th, 5.30 p.m., midnight, and 9 a.m. So this year, because still some people are waiting outside, still worried about COVID, I have no say about COVID anyway, but you make sure that you bring somebody with you. Maybe your family members, maybe your friends, maybe your neighbors, Maybe some strangers. Don't worry about it. You know, just talk to them about Christmas this year and bring them. Maybe this Christmas will change their lives. Give it a try. And please see the bulletin for uh, the other mass schedules and um, uh, office uh, hours. And after this mass, all are invited to my house for a small Christmas celebration. And as, again, you can stay there as long as you want to. No problem. Don't worry about it. The Lord be with you. Oh, okay. I asked for just a short period of time for just after the announcements of the Father. So a week from tomorrow is the day after Christmas, right? Okay. So between the 8 and 11 o'clock mass, the day after Christmas, we're inviting everybody downstairs when you do coffee and donuts to celebrate and thank Father Joby for his 21 years of ordination and his anniversary is the day The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you all the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Glorify the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan, all the evil spirits, who prowl through the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Amen.